Joining me now here on the MA Report is a man who remained undefeated at FAC number eight. Quick work, a quick night of work at the office, Isaac. Congratulations on the victory. You know, I was going through your Instagram and you had this long post about the adversity you dealt yeah. with in this fight because outside looking in, you, you, we look at it, man, quick victory. But then you talk about the adversity the night before the fight in the fight. So like, as you, like, would you say this is the most adversity you've ever dealt with in the fight game? Yeah. In, in a, in a fight, most definitely. I mean, in, uh, in other competitions, other things I've, I've dealt with some adversity, but in the, in, in a actual fight in a cage, most definitely. Like, I mean, obviously they always talk about you, you want to deal with adversity in a win, but like, I, I going through what you went through the night before with, you know, the, the bad food that you had. I mean, was there a moment you're sitting there going, Oh no, is this not going to yeah. come together? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, kind of, uh, either way I was going to fight no matter what. I mean, I signed, I signed a contract to show up that day. And so, uh, I was going to, I was going to fight, but, uh, that night after weigh-ins, I went and ate. And then on the way home, I actually threw up in my buddy's car. Um, and then, I got home and like cleaned all that up, whatever. And I like, I got, I like got in bed, whatever. And then I, I jumped up 20 minutes later and I started like projectile vomiting all over the place. Um, it was, it was just not, not a good deal. And I was just sitting there in my head, like, this is not good. Uh, it was, it was about nine o'clock at night and I, I was weighing the same weight I weighed in at after I got done doing that. So I had to rehydrate, go get more food. Um, and, and just try to try to get back on schedule with, uh, rehydrating. I, I know one of the things that you, uh, you, you mentioned on your Instagram is that you've been using the aura ring to, to yeah. help, uh, you know, in terms of, of tracking everything. And, and I've talked to other fighters who are doing that the same. Did you happen to maybe to go on the app and just kind of see what the aura ring was saying about your body? Uh, no, I actually didn't. I wasn't, I wasn't super focused on it, uh, during my fight week just cause, uh, uh, it, it really doesn't tell me a lot other than my sleep schedule when I'm not training. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, I just, I just really, uh, was freaked out for a couple seconds while that was happening. But once I got more food in me, more water, uh, every, everything was good. And I was, I felt better the next morning. And, and you know, you, you put up this video that was behind the scenes, uh, that uh, a company had put together of just kind of everything about fight day. And, you know, there's, there's a part of that video where James is wrapping your hands and you just kind of, you have this look on your face and we kind of even think about it. as you're getting your hands wrapped before a fight, like what is going through your mind? Uh, man, uh, really, I, I'm kind of at that point, I was kind of, uh, upset cause I hate how I have to wrap my hands like three hours before I fight. And I think it's annoying, but um, I, I, I'm, what I'm thinking about is, um, just really what, what I'm about to put myself into. Like, I know, I know I'm here at this, at this venue and I know here in a couple hours, I'm going to have to go out there and fight some dude. I have no, I have no idea who he is really anything about him. And they're just going to close that door and we're going to fight. So really, I'm just trying to stay calm and not really focus on it. Cause I don't fight until later in the night. Um, I, I've moved, I've progressed through the card. And uh, I don't fight till later in the night. So really, I'm just focused on being calm, remaining calm, not trying to uh, zone out too early and uh, just just be ready for my time. You know, one thing about your fights is uh, the, ju the judges are never needed. <laughs> We've never even seen the second round in terms of what you've done here. But as you evaluate your performance uh, of one minute and 45 seconds, uh, is there something that really sticks out to you about the fight that maybe even you're still thinking about to, you know, this day now that, I mean, the fight's now uh, been over a week? Yeah. Uh, so, I, I mean, I made a couple of mistakes in that fight um, that I, sh I shouldn't have made. I just got a little excited. Um, but I don't know. There's just a couple of things like just range control and stuff. But I was actually upset after the fight because I didn't think it went as well as it went. Um, just because I was blind throughout the fight, I caught, I took a, a nice solid punch and caught a knuckle in my right eye, and so obviously that one wasn't working very well. And then I caught a short hook where his thumb uh, hooked me on the inside of my eye, my uh, eye socket, so my eye swole up uh, shut, and I could I was see, couldn't see it all out of my left eye. So I was just listening to James Krause and everything he was telling me, and uh, that's what got me the win because um, I was just going off feel. 
you know, obviously so many of the guys there have talked about what James is as a coach. And, and I was talking to Chance Rencounter last week and, you know, with this being his first camp at Glory. And he said, you know, the, he goes, the one thing about James is he goes, we're in the back. Just, you know, sitting around. He goes, I'm the last fight. So it's a lot of sitting around. And he says, she goes, and James is still coaching me. He's, mm-hmm. he's showing me new techniques that we haven't even worked on in the training room. So, like, how what is that like for you? Is, is there times where before the fight, James starts saying stuff, stuff to you, and you're just like, dude, like, could you have mentioned this maybe three weeks ago? Uh, I, I mean, kind of. Not not necessarily exactly like that, but uh, just just minor adjustments. Like, uh, before before my last fight, he told me uh, – he told me right before the fight, he was just telling me to stay tight. This dude's, uh, this dude's, uh, he's got that fast twitch muscle, so just stay tight. And uh, my stubborn ass uh, didn't listen to him, and it, it cost my, my vision. So uh, yeah, definitely, definitely need to listen to Kraus when he says something and and take it serious. Why do I have a feeling James brought that up after the fight? <laughs> he 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 didn't. I brought it up to him because uh, I was kind of embarrassed that uh, that that happened, and I was severely compromised because I didn't listen. Uh, and it, it just happened so quick, um, but where both my eyes were gone, so uh, I was I was actually kind of quite embarrassed. Obviously, we you know we see you know uh, in terms of you know the the damage that you did have to eye. Everything good now? Just is it? Yeah, every, everything's all healed up, man. I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to go again. I actually just got back in the gym. Uh, started trying to ease back into everything this week, so uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to fight again. Um, whenever whenever that call comes. Yeah, I mean there there could be some guys in your position that patience is just not a trait they have. Do you feel like you have patience to sit there and go, you know what, the fights are going to come. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm not going to rush this thing. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I definitely want to be patient because I know I know. I haven't been in this game for a long time, and I know I can progress a, a ton with just a few months of uh, like active focus, like just focusing on what I learned from my fight that I just had, things like range control or um, just just starting with my jab, whatever. Just I, I can fix a few things, and I feel like that will level me up so much more. Is there times where you go back and you'll like watch your most recent fight, but then you'll go back to the fight before that? just to kind of see how you've evolved as a martial artist? Oh, most definitely. I, I always watch, watch all my fights, especially on fight week, just cause like I try to, I try to really visualize that moment of like me making that walk me. I watch all those videos that they make. I just try, I try to get in that moment in my head so that by the time the fight comes around, um, I've, I've done this, I've done this hundreds of times, you know, do you kind of in a way zone out when you're, you're making that walk to the cage? Uh, Say that again. Like, do you zone out? Like, it's like sometimes, like after the fact, you got to kind of watch it back, to kind of because maybe just because it's an in the moment kind of thing, you kind of just kind of forget about what happened. Yeah, no. Uh, so I, uh, when I was in college, I was studying psychology, and I learned, uh, I learned about this thing called a uh, peak. Uh, it's like peak performance, and it's uh, they almost like they almost call it. They call it peak performance because not very many athletes get to do this. It's almost like you're watching yourself. Uh, compete so that's kind of it's kind of something that struck me when I was in school because it's something that happened almost every time I would wrestle um and you're only supposed to meet this peak performance like six times like the highest level athletes only only have this experience like six seven times in their careers and it's something that uh I really feel like I experience every time I compete and so definitely when I when I make that walk things seem a little fuzzy but um I just try to I try to own the room you know, I, I make that walk. I have a, I have a ton of fans that come out and show support for me, and uh, they, they get me hyped up and, re- and ready to perform. And, of course, look forward to seeing when the next fight's going to take place. Uh, really appreciate time. Of course, uh, let me know anything you on social media and the sponsors that are helping you out, man. Yeah, man, um, I'm sponsored by Kansas City Wrestling Center. Um, they're, they're awesome. Uh, so right. Um, and uh, Eat to Evolve. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram, Isaac underscore Dolgarian, or uh, my Facebook is just Isaac Dolgarian.